into a nation. We are officially now into the third week, if you can believe it. Day 15 here. And uh, a couple of reminders, motility matters. Okay, so movement, general movement, whatever you're doing, just general activities around the house makes a difference. So don't get in the habit of just doing your exercise and then following your diet and then laying around as much as you can. Try to move as, as well that we, you know, I mean, basically since COVID, a lot of people work from home. They don't move as much as they did. I know a lot of people that are still, still working from home. I know. And then the weather hasn't been that great. So. And the weather hasn't been that great. Get out and move. Go for 10 minute walks, mm -hmm. you know, especially around meal times. you know, eat, go for a 10 minute walk. The other thing I want to mention is hydration, mm -hmm. water and salts or water and electrolytes. You can always use our ATP Lab XL electrolytes. This can be a game changer in terms of how you feel in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. More often than not, especially if you're working out, if you feel like your energy levels are low, you think, oh, you know, I need to eat. No, it's probably water and salt. It's probably water and salt or water and or salt. One of those two mm -hmm. or both. Think about those two things if you ever feel like you don't have, quote, energy to do whatever it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Martina, you want to mention something? Oh, also yes. I wanted to talk about uh, some of the food logs. So right from the get-go, this person um, has been eating most of her carbs in the form of bread. And frankly, because it's been a while, you know, at the beginning, I suggested to put some variety into your carbohydrates. And it's because it's a source of food, but it's also a source of micronutrients right so even though we always eat the same things there is a certain amount of importance to be given to micronutrients and that's the reason why i think that you should think about eating you know we talked about legumes being a mixture of carbohydrate and uh, protein i consider them to be um, a form of carbohydrates myself but you can have that you have you know some of the grains have great benefits you can have potatoes and roots, you know, have great benefits. So I'd like to encourage you to not always eat the very same source of, uh, by the way, anything. So not just oil, for example, for fat or just, you know, uh, beef, which s some of you have this issue, beef all the time for each of your meals. Or again, you know, not just bread, especially because bread is not really at the top of my list of the best carbs to ingest. Mm. But just a suggestion. And another thing about that, and I would know better is because for those of us that are um, maybe addicted to certain forms of food, it's always better when you're, I like to call it dieting, to try to get used to other things that you don't like as much, which then will basically kind of help you get over the things that you abuse, okay? So if I bring bread into my house and then I start, to, I say to myself, I'm going to have two slices for breakfast and then I have two slices for lunch, well, it's very likely that I'm going to finish the entire loaf that day. Speaking of bread, you know, there, it's really hard to find good bread these days, especially mm -hmm. with the amount of chemical sprays that go on to wheat and stuff like that. Yeah. What is a good bread to have? I mean, wait, like there are so many things that go into a good bread, right? It's not just a nutrition label, it's the ingredients, it's the origins. Yeah. Um, so I, I, like, I like sourdough very much. Yeah, but you know, some of the, the whole grain to one can be good as well. We're looking in, in terms of how much fiber there is in it, how much protein, how much added ingredients there is, yeah. how many ingredients in general, you know, the littliest, the, the better. So just know where your bread comes from. Yeah, I mean, you know, always look at the, always look at the ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are getting something like a sourdough, and I bring up sourdough just simply because it tends to be, you know, obviously low or no gluten, it shouldn't have any gluten in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's hopefully going to be free of pesticides mm -hmm. like glycosphates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you may want to consider going with a with a sourdough, but just make sure that there should only be a couple of ingredients in there, right? I mean, yeah. What do you what do you need that goes yeah, in the sourdough? No, it, it could be a little bit more, right? Yeah. And then just the flour and the yeast, yeah. and you know some uh, some breads have eggs, some they have seeds, they can have added oil, yeah. for example, and they usually have a stabilizer, and it could be a natural one or not. Okay. So, but, um, and I also had a second, uh, there, there's like a, a word that I really run away from and it's style. So this particular person uses a yogurt that is called crema style Greek yogurt, right? And then I have nothing against, um, like Greek yogurt sounds really good, but when you see style something, you always have to be a little bit, you know, wondering what that means. And in this case, in particular, for example, the amount of protein in this particular Greek yogurt was half and the carbohydrates were higher, right? So if we're going to eat uh, Greek yogurt- The fat, because... was, the fat was higher, sorry, right? 
the fat you're correct yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. apologize yeah the fat was higher yep. so if you're going to eat greek yogurt the reason why you're going to do this is because you would like to eat more protein and then a little bit less carb and usually the fat is contained right but in this particular one which must i'm sure taste really good the protein content was quite low and if and again feel free to eat it the ingredient list was really good but then remember that then in, instead of thinking this is a product that brings in a lot of um of protein and very little carbs and and fat consider it as a source of fat right so then uh, in that meal you need to have more protein in that meal you need to have more carbohydrates that's mm -hmm. it yeah you know again Pre-planning, uh, getting used to foods, we realize that it's it's only been two weeks, but still one fifth of the challenge. Mm -hmm. We should be be getting more and more accustomed to not perfect, mm -hmm. but more and more accustomed to looking at what's contained in what. And if you're unsure about foods, like you know something's listed in there in the ingredients that you're not sure of, you can always obviously fire us a question. Of course, I may add something. Yeah, it's about the fats, right? So I have found that some of you will go into their like excessively into their fats and like almost without thinking so i know for a fact that you're not you're doing this at the end of the day but there are certain things that that when you what you do when you do it when i was saying that sometimes i write mine in the middle of the day and i'm pretty satisfied with that is because i have a good eye for those things right so one of my favorite breakfast is smoked salmon with eggs and avocado we can't do that you know, like you eat like that I'm is sure. your fat done yeah. for the day. So some of you will eat and really not think about it. You know, have, for example, higher fat breakfast. I see sausages, I see whole eggs. I sometimes see avocado. Then they will have beef for lunch. There's going to be um, oils, for example, in the preparation of that food. And maybe whatever comes with it is already a little bit fattier as well. Sometimes there's cheese. And then you're going to have some nuts in your snack or mid um, afternoon meal. And then at night you will eat salmon or halibut or something that has more fat. And because you don't have really an idea of how much you're doing, you're going to be surprised. And how many times this week have I seen your food log at 150% of, of what was recommended, right? Yeah. So. so generally speaking, unless you're trying to add fat to your, my fitness pal, to your, to your daily accounting, if you're adding fat sources, go with lean foods. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, so it's way in general, easier. always go for the lean foods. And then if you have to add a fat source, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are starting your day out strong with fat, you're probably going to go over with your fat intake, right? But again, this should be pre-planning. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're having meats or fish, choose the lean ones. Fish is easy because most fishes are lean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, red meat, um, there are many lean ones, whether it's flank or eye round, or even top sirloin is not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or if you're getting ground, just make sure it's extra, extra lean. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and you know, and just be careful when you're having things like, you know, salmon, avocado, nuts, butters and oils, etc. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or in this case, yogurt. Feedback from this person here. Let's just quickly take a look at this. This person did two resistance-based workouts. So they missed out on one, but they did four cardios. So kudos to this person for doing extra cardio, but of course they missed one, one weight training session. session. So this person writes, weekend comes in harder with social activities. Sure. Right. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I mean, anything else you want to add to that? Nope. It does. It's yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a level of sacrifice. If you choose not to sacrifice, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the end of last day's video. If you choose not to sacrifice, you know, you're, you know, probably not going to make as much uh, progress. Mm -hmm. Pretty so plan. Very, very likely. Walk around, yep. anticipate, yep. you know, like ask your friends to cook healthy meals for you. Bring your own. Name something specific you need help with. Recovery has been slow and painful. Mm -hmm. you, yes. will, you will get slow for sure from, from resistance training, especially if you're not used to it. But the two biggest things that are going to make a difference with your recovery are what, Martina? Water. No. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep is definitely one of them. Yeah, and? Salt? No. What? Okay, sleep and food. Oh. Okay, now obviously more more specifically the types of food you're gonna have. Oh, okay, I was like, yeah. we are on the plant, so that's, that's taken care of. Yeah. The macros that you have right now, it's not the most ideal for recovery. I mean, the most ideal for recovery would be, it would be a slightly, yeah, a slightly accessing calories, really. Mm -hmm. This is why it matters, the types of foods that you eat 
and the quality of those foods. Indeed. 50 grams of straight white sugar is not going to have, you know, the, the nutrition that 50 grams of sugar of fruit is going to have. Absolutely. Okay, it's not going to have all the fiber, it's not going to have all the vitamins and minerals and the phytonutrients. It's not going to have all of that. Mm -hmm. So you, we need to choose good quality food. Make sure you get all your calories because this is going to affect, well, it's going to affect how your protein is utilized. Indeed. Right? If yeah. you don't, if you, if you get all your protein, but you don't eat enough calories, right? Everybody thinks this is the best way to go. Uh, you're going to burn through more protein for energy. So, yeah. you know, and this is going to affect your recovery. So make sure you eat well. Drink water, sleep more. Sleep. Sleep is another big one. Sleep is when the majority of your recovery happens. Okay. I, I, I'm going to say pretty much your, all of your recovery is going to happen during your sleep. So you've got to make sure that you get yeah. good quality sleep. Enough good quality sleep. Mm -hmm. Message of the day. This is one of my favorite ones. Every meal is a short-term investment in how you feel, a mid-term investment in how you look, and a long-term investment in your freedom from disease. Or health. Oh, yeah. It's an investment in your health. So we want to think about all these things. All of these things are important, and we want to think always long-term. Right, Martina? I agree. Anything you want to add to that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to read one more time. Every meal is a short-term investment in how you feel, a mid-term investment in how you look, and a long-term investment in your freedom from disease. I guess we could just say your health overall. Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself and for the love of God, give some gratitude. And we'll talk to you all very soon.